Hi, I'm Legolock, a Legacy Locked Iron Man. I'm an RS3 player locked into the Legacy Combat Mode and the Legacy Interface, which means I can't use any abilities. I have quite big plans including, but not limited to, the Reaper Crew achievement, full best in slot gear, and even solo 100% Zamorak. I'm playing modern day RuneScape in an old school way. This will not be easy, but fortunately, I love a good challenge. I'm Legolock, and welcome to my journey. In our previous episode, we left off beginning the Hermotic Plate grind and working on level 80. Our kill times were right around 3 minutes per Hermod kill, and I'm glad to say that in this episode, we've improved that by a pretty hefty margin. There it is, level 80 necromancy, dude. Now it's time to get into the tier 80 tank tasks. The goal moving forward is to get the tier 80 tank tasks done for the tier 80 weapon set, then do the same thing at level 90. Though it's not as easy as it seems. I need an onyx for the tank task at level 90. And as an Iron Man at my level, I have zero easy access methods aside from the water filtration system in Hetz Oasis, which is major RNG at best. I do have an idea for that later on, but I can't reveal that secret just yet. As for Hermotic Plate progress, I'm currently sitting on 10 out of the 29 total plates I'll need for full tier 90 power armor. For now, tier 70 power and tank gear should be more than enough to get through everything I need. But now, it's time for the God Wars. Hey, there we go, yes. Yes, 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 the death mark is huge. Ooh, 807, that's not too shabby. Oh, jeez. Oh, look at that, look at that. Sweet, sweet proc. We love it, dude. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, dude. She mercs. Oh, bless, thank you. Thank you, death mark. The first time doing Criara. <laughs> A little bit nervous. I don't know how this is going to go because Riara is known to be very strong. But to be honest, very easy. So. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, I knew something like that was going to happen. I freaking knew it, bro. I freaking knew that was going to happen. Oh, dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. I was too late. I love this game. I genuinely love this game so much with all my heart. Okay, I gotta be quick, gotta be quick. Oh, wow. What a freaking time to be alive, dude. And there's our soul urn all finished up. Now we do the turn in and level 80 dual wield set is unlocked. Dude, this is cool. My third tier 80 set. Let's uh, let's give Hermon a try real quick and just see how much quicker the kills are. Heck yeah, dude. We got a Hermotic plate. We shaved 1.2 seconds off. So we got a two tick BB. So a 213.8. So not a major improvement, but something that's pretty important to notice is I didn't have a super necromancy potion. So I need to work on getting some more super necromancy potions and work on that grind. But I'm pretty sure I could get around a 145, 150 with this. Hey, there we go. We have 85 necromancy coming in. Just a quick little progress update. We are now able to do Remains of the Necrolord after we get 86 Archaeology. And let's just take a quick look at the log. So we currently have 124 Hermod KC. Our PB is a 151.6. And we are sitting on 18 Hermotic Plates. We are well above drop rate, actually. I didn't realize that. Oh my gosh. The kills are just so long. So it feels like I should be done with this by now. And there is 89 smithing coming in. That is not quite 90, but it is a milestone that I'm content with because now I can do corrupted ore, which mining corrupted ore and sand stones is just super, super AFK. So it makes this grind a lot less intense. A nice little quest requirement knocked on out. Well, it looks like it is time to take a break from the rest of the goals of the episode and knock out the new quest. Oh my gosh, this is genuinely difficult. All right, I think I figured out the method. I just had to make sure that my companions are in attackable range and I'm out of it. Oh my gosh, dude. This is legitimately hard. Oh my goodness. All right, take three. We have full tier 70 tank here and we have a sign of light. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is the charm.
Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, the defensive take was definitely the move, but glad to have that over with. I would say easy, but that was not easy at all. <laughs> that was very difficult. It is now time for me to start working on the major grind, I, I feel like, of this episode, aside from necromancy, and that is getting 85 archaeology, as well as unlocking ancient summoning. I'm backed up on a few necromancy quests at the moment in my AFK time. I'm already doing pretty well with mining and smithing. Other things I would like to work on that are totally unrelated are really just 80 agility so I can do the light within. That way I can have a good combo of being able to use the Prism of Restoration for pretty much infinite healing from a Blood Reaver. There we go. That is mystery number five. Yeah, mystery number five which is two out of four of the Zamorakian mysteries that I need to solve for the Ancient Summoning. As soon as we started digging, I discovered that I needed a few quests in order to unlock Ancient Summoning, specifically bringing home the bacon to bring a slice of bacon to one of the gargoyles, as well as land of the goblins to enter another gargoyle portal as a goblin. I had all the other requirements ready to go, including the cows from player on farms. Then it was on to freeing Dagon the gatekeeper. And that is Ancient Summoning Unlocked. That is going to be <laughs> actually a very major upgrade for the account. Holy crap. The gathering for, <laughs> for pouches and sues. And this is what my life looks like now. You are about to witness the first six binding contracts to ever be created on Legolock. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. So today is a new day and I was looking at the Kili tasks for the tier 90 power gear and I completely forgot that I need an onyx, but at my current state in the game, the only onyx I've ever gotten was from the Hetz Oasis water filtration system. So I was looking into different ways of getting onyx and so there's quite a few options. I could just fight the Zekar waves and the Zek encounter and just, you know, pray to the RNG gods or the most plausible or the most realistic option, something that would probably take the least amount of time, is to make an extreme divination potion. Divination potions at their base can boost you by three, the super divination potion will boost you by five, and the extreme boosts you all the way up to plus 17. So right now, my divination level is 83. An extreme divination might not boost me that full 17, but I would just need to be boosted up by 14 levels in order to transmute any of my onyx dust, which I have 273 of from Hermod, into onyxes. So I need an onyx for the tier 90 Achilles task, and then I also, if I could get another onyx, I would be able to make one of the best in slot necklaces <laughs> that I can use for a long time, which is the Reaper's necklace, because that requires 90 crafting. I have 86 crafting. I almost have 300 Reaper points, and all I would need to do is boost it. So what I'm going to do is start Recipe for Disaster and work on freeing Evil Dave. So on to freeing Dave. This required two more quests, Shadow of the Storm as well as the Evil Dave portion of Recipe for Disaster. You now a slight benefit to doing all this is all the ashes I'll get that are auto banked because I have the tome. So it's not a total loss of time because it's helping out a little bit with necromancy rituals. Hey, look at that. We got the Hellcat too. <laughs> I forgot that that was possible. Then it turns out in order to obtain rabbit paws for regular divination potions, I needed to complete Eagle's Peak to have access to a ferret to hunt rabbits with. So I knocked that out as well. Finally, the Hail Mary piece of this puzzle was the Yak Tuft. This comes from Yaks in your player own farms, but not just any Yaks, only the Spirit Yaks or the Sacred Yaks, which require breeding, or to get a Spirit Yak directly, I'd need to make Pack Yak pouches with 96 summoning, which I didn't have, which would be a 1 in 5,000 chance anyway. I could also rely on the Trapper in player own farms, but that has less than a 1% chance of happening, specifically a 0.75% chance of happening. So, here I am at Nate's is not. Yes, dude. <laughs> Heck yeah, yak number one is a female. Let's go, dude. The slaughter continued on mobile, which led me to grinding out two more yaks, the last of which being the gender that I needed to breed, as well as level 88 necromancy. In total, this took me about 4,000 yak KC, give or take, and with a drop rate of about 1 in 3k per yak, I was obviously very, very spooned. Now it's time to put them in their pens and let them grow, and get back to the archaeology grind. That's a nice level 70. And that is Fallen Angels Solved. And another one. We make one trumpet for the collection, and we get Zez in the process. 
Hey, there is another 90 skill, 90 smithing. 90 smithing means that we'll be able to make full Elder Rune plus 5. This is a major step up from being able to use Bay Knight plus 4. This will help us a ton at Corp. And I can finally use all my visages from Wildy events to make Dragonfire Shield, which is great. And another plate. So a little bit of time has passed since my last clip, and I just want to give you a little bit of an update on how the Yak Farm is going. Uh, we were just training some prayer here because we've gotten a lot of Infernal Ashes from Wild Events, so we're sitting at 84 right now. But before we go and speak on POF, something else that I realized I could do was Vindicta. I decided to try Vindicta because I got a Reaper assignment. And then I also realized that Vindicta drops a lot of Dragon Bones. This is probably going to be one of my, unless I find something better, one of my main methods of getting Bones for training Prayer to get that up to 92 and eventually 95. And now let's head on over to POF and just see how we are doing. So we have two calves, or hello. <laughs> We have two yaks in each pen. I think maybe three in this pen. So we have a female, a female with two traits, which is great. That's an adult. And then another adolescent male. So this is going to be another breeding pen breeding pair once I unlock that ability. And then I also have another female over here and an elder male. And then in the pen, I just have male and female that are just, you know, creating more yaks for me. So this is kind of going all according to plan. So the goal right now is to have it so... I have a breeding pair in each large pen. So that just makes it so I have quicker daily potential to land on a spirit yak or land on a sacred yak. Oh, we have a trapper. Let's see what we get. Ugh. Now, this isn't the biggest hindrance in the world because, as you can see, I'm 74 archaeology and I still need 86 in order to do Tomes of the Warlock. So there's still plenty of time before... I even need to get the onyx it's just that when i'm doing combat i want to have those tier 90s unlocked but i am 75k away from level 90 necromancy and i have 10 vindicta and each vindicta kill is about 10,000 experience so let's go knock that out and there it is 90 necromancy dude that is huge Although I can't really complete this task without an onyx, I think something that is going to be good is I'm probably going to work on the tier 90 power task. From what I remember, even on my main, this took a very, very long time. Doing these 50 communion rituals, I will probably do that instead of the reaper soul because I'm going to need these souls anyway. That'll get me close to 91. This is the last time we'll ever have to do this. Ever have to dust off any of these mounds. This feels so good. <laughs> A few hours later. And there are all 50 powerful communion souls, which got us all the way to 93 necromancy. Did not expect that. So we ended up getting all the way from about 5k to 13.8k. So still have about 16.2 or really 16.1 thousand more souls to get in order to have the requirement for alpha versus omega. But we obviously still have plenty more to do. So three more quests before we can even start or consider starting Alpha versus Omega. But y'all, something very, very sweet happened that I did not expect. So let's go check it out. And would you look at this beautiful, beautiful animal. Do you know what this is? This is the key to my two onyxes. These yak tufts are what I have been waiting for. <laughs> I am so stoked that I finally have a spirit yak. I, I honestly did not think it was going to pay off this soon. I thought I was going to have to wait for a much longer time, but instead of these actually coming from the Fremnik yaks, they came from the trapper. So anyway, two yak tufts. I have one super divination potion ready to go, another rabbit foot. So I'm going to go ahead and make one more. That way I can make use of both of these yak tufts, which will allow me to gather incandescent energy and allow me to use that incandescent energy to form all of my onyx dust that I currently have into uncut onyxes, which is going to be perfect. Now, the only thing left is I need to be able to boost to make the super divination potion, which requires 89 or extreme divination potion, which requires 89 herb lore. I am 82 right now. And so I need to go ahead and get to, I believe, 83 or 84 so that I can boost up with a stew. Just a quick little quest to make our stews give a plus six bonus. So I only need to get about 15,000 experience to get 83 herb lore. And then I am good to go for the boost. 83 herb lore coming in. 
This should hopefully be enough brown spice. Let's go, dude. Plus 17 divination. That is absolutely nuts. And it's for six minutes. And I'm pretty sure if I boost this with lantadime sticks, it'll be longer. That, oh, yes, yes. Oh, it's all coming together. I'm so stoked, dude. I can't believe this works. I legit cannot believe this works. I feel like I'm hacking the game right now. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my gosh. This is so good. Like this is, this is so easy for me to do now. Heck yeah. That is so wild. That's both Onyxes created, which took about 250 each or something. 225, 250. Yeah, 250 each. And I still have 579 incandescent energy left over. What's really great about this is that I have access to essentially the best divination training method at level 83 because I have extremes. And like I said, these are not hard to get for me now. This is a very, very, very good unlock for the remainder of the series. We buy the Hydrix. We craft it and smelt it into the Hydrix necklace. Oh, dude. Huge unlock. Let's go, dude. The Reaper necklace is ours. 